Hi everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to create cool looking orthographic maps in QGIS. The orthographic projection is a projection that shows the entire world as a globe. These are useful to show things like navigation routes, flight paths, and locator maps such as this example. Creating these in QGIS is fairly easy, but it requires adding a custom projection. This gets a little technical for the non-professional GIS user, but I figured it out so it can't be too hard. We need a good set of vector data for the world, so I'll use data from the Natural Earth website. I'll download three files from the 1 to 10 million cultural and physical vectors pages. Countries, geographic lines, and graticules. Now I'll go to QGIS and add the countries layer and also one of the graticules layers. These are optional, but I think they improve the look of ortho projections. Our map is now in the default WGS84 projection. Once we have the data in place, we can move on to the projection. To create an orthographic projection, you probably want the view to be centered over some point on the Earth. This means a specific latitude and longitude. There's a really easy way to get those numbers. Google Maps or Google Earth. Here's the Google Earth method. In Google Earth, find the area you want to be the center point, then go to Add Place Mark. A box will appear along with a yellow square on the map. Drag the yellow marker to the area you want. Don't worry about marking the location too precisely. Here I'm using Finland. The info box will display the latitude and longitude coordinates. These will be in the standard degrees, minutes, seconds format. You'll need to convert these into decimal format to use them in QGIS. Luckily, there are websites that will do this for you. Do a quick search for latitude converter, and you'll see a bunch of them. This one is from the FCC. Enter the numbers from Google Earth into the fields, then click Convert to Decimal, and the new values will appear. This process is even easier in Google Maps. Zoom out to the area you want, then right-click on the center point you want to use. The coordinates will appear, and they're already in decimal format, so you don't need to convert anything. Now that we have the coordinates we need, we can create our custom projection. In QGIS, go to Settings, Custom Projections. The custom CRS window will appear. To create the new projection, click on the green plus sign and enter a name. For this example, since my view is centered over Finland, I'll use that for the name. Click on the Format menu and set it to Proj String. In the box, enter this formula. You might notice that I rounded off the numbers. There's no point in using too much precision here. Once you've entered the string, click the Validate button to check it, and then click OK. This saves the projection in the QGIS projection library, but doesn't apply it to the map. To do that, go to the CRS settings like you normally would, and enter the new projection name in the search field. Select it, and then click OK. I'll also change the color of the land areas and the graticules. That's pretty cool, but there's no ocean. I've tried a lot of ways to deal with this, and I finally came up with one that works well enough. You might be thinking, why not just add a shapefile for the oceans? I've tried that, and it doesn't work. The oceans layer disappears when I apply the orthographic projection. I don't know why that is. I'm sure there's an explanation, but it's beyond my GIS knowledge. I also tried the Natural Earth Bounding Box layer, but the same thing happens. So instead of generating a GIS-approved globe shape, I just draw a circle behind the land layer. Here are the steps for that. First, we need to create a layer to hold our circle. Go to Layer, Create Layer, New Temporary Scratch Layer. I think older versions of QGIS called this a memory layer. When the new temporary scratch layer window appears, set the geometry type to polygon, then click OK. Move this layer to the bottom in the Layers panel. Next, you need to bring up the Shape Digitizing toolbar. To do this, right-click anywhere in an empty spot on the toolbar and select it. The new toolbar will appear. Click on the little arrow next to the Add Circle icon and select Add Circle from Two Points. 
This will let us draw a circle by clicking a starting and ending point, which will be opposite sides of the circle. Here's the tricky part. You want to look for two points on opposite sides of the globe that have land areas. This will make it easier to draw the circle the correct size. In this example, there are land areas on both sides of the globe that I can use as a guide. Position the cursor at the starting point and click and drag. When the circle looks aligned, right click to set it. You may need to make several tries to get it aligned correctly. Once your circle is in place, you can style it. There are two basic options, a solid color or a shape burst fill. The shape burst option looks nice, so that's what I usually use. To create this effect, double click on the scratch layer to open the layer properties window, or you can use the layer styling panel. Set simple fill to shape burst fill and select the colors you want. The second color will be the inside of the gradient. In the shading style area, I usually click the set distance box. This lets me control the gradient. Try 25 as a starting value. You can also add a blur to the effect. When you like what you have, click OK. Here are some examples of different coloring schemes you can create with the Oceans layer. If your map needs to be black and white, you can also get some interesting effects. Sometimes you can get a more pleasing effect if the area in question isn't at the direct center of the globe. This is especially true for areas that are pretty far north or south of the equator. Here's an example using Madagascar. Putting it right in the center looks odd. People aren't used to looking at the world this way. You get a better look by offsetting the area of interest. This is easy to do. When you're picking the point for your coordinates, instead of the area itself, Get the coordinates of an offset location. Offsets to the north or south usually work the best. Google Earth is helpful for this. Here I've shifted the globe so that Madagascar is south and east of the center point. This looks more natural and recognizable to me. This viewpoint puts the Central African Republic at the center of the globe. I could add a place marker to get the coordinates, but they'd be in the standard format and I'd have to convert them, which is no big deal. But since I'm lazy, I'll go to Google Maps to get the decimal numbers instead. Next, I'll go to QGIS to create a new custom projection. I'll name this one Madagascar Offset. Then I'll paste the formula in with the offset coordinates, the one centering on the Central African Republic. I'll apply this projection to the map, and here's what we get. To me, that looks better than having the target area in the center since Africa is more recognizable this way. You can also add a little atmosphere to your globe if you want to get fancy. To do this, we'll add an effect to the scratch layer. Double click on the layer to open layer properties, click on shape burst fill, then check the draw effects box and click on the star icon. Check the box for outer glow, set the spread to 10 as a starting point, and select a color. Here's how that looks. If you want to get really fancy, you can add a second outer glow layer, set it to white with a smaller spread. This will create a two-layer atmosphere effect. If you want to create an orthographic map that shows shaded relief, that's easy. Most of the natural earth raster files work fine with this method, and they already include the oceans, so you can skip that step. Here I'll start with the cross-blended hypsometric file and add the vector countries layer over it. I'll change the countries layer to no brush so that only the borders are visible. Next, I'll apply a projection that puts Ukraine in the center. Here's how that looks. 
Sometimes, for reasons I don't really understand, some ortho projections produce weird results with these files. Here's what my Finland projection looks like. Unless you know what's causing this problem and how to solve it, just be aware of this issue. The natural earth ocean bottom layer also works with vector land areas over it. Here's how that looks. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.